All right, this is gonna be a gear overview of everything I'm gonna be carrying for an upcoming uh, Utah muzzleloader mule deer hunt. It's kind of gonna be a different hunt than normally I do. It's not gonna be one where I'm very weight conscious, but uh, you know, I still weigh everything out and try to get as dials as I can. I'm gonna be going for six total days, but I'm gonna be splitting my trip into um, three backpacking days at a time. So this is everything I'll carry for three days, run back to the truck, get some more food, come back out. Uh, yeah, so temperatures are probably going to be, you know, that 50s down to, you know, low low to high 30s at night. So I'm kind of thinking right now, next week we're going to be experiencing some rain. So I got a lot of rain gear, um, a lot of essentials. So I'll just run, start running through it right now of all the gear I'm going to be carrying. We'll start with uh, my backpack setup. So for my backpack setup, I'm not using the... Normally I take a Sky Archer 6200 just because a bigger bigger pack, I can fit a lot more volume of stuff in there and I'm usually going out you know, for six to 10 days at a time. But this hunt, since I'm breaking into two smaller three day trips at a time, I'm gonna be running the Stone Glacier um, Evo 3300. And I'm gonna be running this in bivy mode, so I'm not gonna have a top loader on it. I just love this pack, it's small, I can compress it down, works perfect for three days at a time. I can fit all my camp gear, food, optics in here. It's a super lightweight pack. I use this on a bear hunt this year in Montana. Worked phenomenal. Um, very light, still very comfortable, holds meat very well. And the only thing with my backpack is I also carry a Stone Glacier Rainfly. I just always have this with, just never knowing you get stuck in a rainstorm. And so I do have a lot of optics, you know, we'll have a bunch of camera gear. I just like to throw this on top of my pack. Any chance there's going to be some rain. Um, and this whole setup right here is 4.03 pound, 4 pounds for backpack and the Rainfly. Next, I'm going to jump into my sleeping system. Um, for this hunt, I'm gonna be running a Seek Outside Little Bug Out with three-piece vestibule. And I'll be pitching that with two of these Black Diamond Ergo Cork trekking poles. Um, reason I'm running a Seek Outside this hunt, just a little bit lighter, but I still have a ton of room. Like, I just wanna have a little more space on this hunt to move around at night, and still very light. And then for my sleep system, I am going to be running a Western Mountaineering Astrolite quilt. Um, I've always loved quilts, as you can see, it's packed down into pretty much nothing. And this is like their 26 degree quilt. So it's very, very warm still, very small, compact. The only slight downside is I was using this in Wyoming last week on an elk hunt. You know, all quilts are kind of a little shorter, so my head was out, but I do carry a lot of extra clothes with. And so I will throw a down jacket on night just to throw it over my head to keep my head warm. But Super lightweight quilt, you know, Western Mountaineering. And then I'm also going for a little more comfort in this trip, since I'm not gonna be going in too crazy deep and for only three days. So I'm gonna have a Climate, uh, their Ultralight S SL sleeping pad. And then another thing which I normally never do, but for this one I will, a little lightweight Climate uh, pillow. This thing was awesome last week in Wyoming, so I'm gonna continue using that right now. And since I am running a stove with shelter, uh, I always carry, uh, this is just a Tyvek ground sheet, you can pick it up pretty much anywhere. It's just really lightweight, it helps me kind of protect my sleeping pad a little bit. You know, laying on the dirt, I don't want my sleeping pad to pop. I also keep my quilt nicer, it doesn't get a bunch of dirt on it. So I'll throw this in the bottom of my shelter. Um, I mentioned the trekking poles I'm going to be using to hike in with, and then I'm also going to use those to pitch the seek outside. And these are my stakes. I like a little different style stake than what comes in most tents. I run a Rutta Lacura. Um, this is one of their Sorex states, stakes. I believe it's six inches long. It's basically like a carbon arrow cut down with a little point onto it. Super light. I like these a little bit more than a normal like a shepherd's hook because they have a little more uh, surface area so they kind of hold in dirt in places like that where you don't have a lot of, uh, I don't know, better soil conditions. I believe that's it there. So my whole sleep system right now runs at 4.31 pounds. It's a little heavier than like my early season mule deer stuff, but like I said, temperatures are kind of changing, so I'm gonna be running you know, a little warmer, a little more quilt than I do, and the seek outside setup. So for now, I'm gonna run through closed packs. So, but what I mean by closed pack is stuff I'm not gonna wear into my hunt, so keep this in my backpack for when uh, temperatures are changing. You know, I'll wear a lot of stuff in the morning and then take it off midday. Um, first is my Sika beanie. And this is actually an open country because I left one of my subalpine ones on a mountain somewhere. So I wear this in the morning, just for, just cause it's cold out. And I do have a pair of 
Sitka Ascent gloves. And again, Subalpine is what I normally wear, but I got these in Optifade because I lost my other pair. And for all my hunts, I always carry rain gear just because for safety reasons, you never know when you count on a rainstorm. And I am expecting some rain next week. So we'll carry tops and bottoms. This is the Sitka Flash Pullover in Subalpine. Super lightweight. The thing I like about this too, it's not a full zip. I don't really think you need a full zip when you're not expecting a ton of torrential downpour. So it's a you know, half zip design, big hood on it, super comfortable. I'll also use this as a windbreaker. So I won't need a lot of insulation there. So I'll just throw this on in the evening or the morning when I'm glassing to keep some wind off me. And these are just the Sika Dew Point Pants in uh, Optifade. Just what I pack on pretty much every hunt. These are super lightweight. And again, I'll use these for a wind blocker too. And this is one of the Sika's new pieces for 2018 that I've actually fallen in love with. I just have always wanted a outer layer that kind of has elbow pads, just for leaning back glassing all the time, making a stock, and you're calling it on your elbows. Good elbow pads. This is their Apex hoodie. Very, very comfortable. Articulates, moves with you, moves with you very well. Has a nice big pocket on the bottom. You know, I could throw random stuff in there, but it's just super comfortable. I kind of replaced this with the uh, um, heavyweight core heavyweight hoodie. Very versatile piece. So yeah, that rounds out my whole clothes pack, and that runs 3.56 pounds for all the stuff I am packing in clothes. Now I'm going to dive into all the clothes and clothes slash gear that I wear on a hunt. Um, this is stuff I'm going to be wearing day to day, wearing in when I'm hiking, and basically just live in this stuff. This is going to be my Go Hunt FlexFit Delta hat from Charcoal. Just really love this hat. I mean, this has already had a full 10 days of hunting in Wyoming for elk, and doesn't show any sweat stains. Super comfortable hat. So good neutral colors. And Sika, um, Sika belt, just gotta keep your pants up. And then for hunts, I always just wear one pair of boxers. One pair of boxers the entire time. Even though I'm going to be going back to my truck, I'll probably have another one of these in my truck just to switch out on, but I just wear one pair the whole time. These are great pairs of boxers. So this next piece is one I wear day in and day out. I constantly have this piece on. This is a Sika um, core lightweight hoodie. Just love the articulating hood again. Keeps you know your back and your neck away from sun. Don't get sunburned. Also keeps you know good insulation layer. And I can sweat in this day in and day out, and it does not stink, which is a huge benefit. And then my pants are just my go-to kind of early to mid-season pants. The Sika scent pants. It's very breathable. Very you know abrasion resistant. I you know beat these things to a pulp, and they're still still kicking. And then for my socks, I'm a big darn tough sock fan. You know I just Socks are everything. This is the uh, Merino Boot Cushion 212 sock. And they have a great warranty. If you ever pop a hole in it, you can get a new pair of socks. So that basically rounds out that, besides for my boots. And for boots, everyone knows I've always been a shoe guy, but I do start to wear boots later in the sun. So right now I'm trying to break in these new pair of Latham for the Suns Mountain Hunter Elites. Um, I'm gonna be wearing these later on in November. So I kinda wanna just break them in a little bit more. These guys are awesome. Custom boot, custom fit, insoles, great set of boots. Um, this whole kit comes in at um, 8.10 pounds, and a lot of that weight is the boots. This is what I wear on a daily basis with the hat and everything, and also just have my normal Fitbit watch on too that I'll run around as to track my steps and track my calorie burn. So I like to you know, look at data after hunt, see what I burn for calories. All right, now I'm gonna run through my optic setup for this hunt. I'm a big promoter of glass and using lots of glass to hunt. So I got my big dog here, my, this is Zeiss 85 millimeter spine scope. I've had this forever. Just great for digiscoping, great for glassing. I actually use these, um, use the spotting scope a lot for long distance glassing. I just will sit on these, pick apart deer in the shade, analyze bucks racks, trying to figure out what I'm going after. Great spotting scope. Um, I also keep my uh, phone scope adapter on the top of my spotter, so it's just quick and easy. So my, camera on, on my phone, twist it, and boom, I'm digiscoping. And then for my binoculars, I run my binoculars in a marsupial um, medium bino harness. This is one of their prototype ones, but I believe all these new designs are now um, in their line. I got a new po pocket in the back. I'll stick my phone in there a lot. Easy access digiscope. Um, got the Go Hunt spuds on the outside. And I will keep my windicator on the left side of this pouch here. Um, and binoculars I'm running, are Vortex Razor HD um, 12x50s. I've been a big fan of 12x50s, glassing off my neck, glassing off the tripod. 
And then on these, I also keep the Vortex Uni adapter for uh, glass graphite drive bottles. Keep them right on there. They still easily fit in the vinyl harness. Pulls it right up. And you notice at the top, I got the Go Hunt Vinyl Bandit. That's key for glassing when you got sunny conditions and you just want to avoid that sun coming inside your eye. It just helps glassing animals a lot better. Super great vinyl harness. Range finder is going to be my old trusty uh, Leopold RX 1000 with angle compensating. Um, I will have my phone, my iPhone 7 with the phone scope on as well. I believe that runs out with all my optics. Oh, besides for my Siru uh, 1204 XL with a VA5 Siru head. Still a little heavier tripod than I normally will carry, but it's, it's great for stability in the wind. Um, since this is a slight backpack hunt, I'm only going for three days, I will have a little heavier tripod just for a little back, better glassing conditions. And that whole kit comes in at 11 point, yeah, 11 point six pounds for all my optic setup. All right, now I'll talk about my weapon for this hunt. So this is obviously a muzzleloader hunt and it is in Utah. Full powered scopes are legal. So this is a Remington um, 50 caliber ultimate muzzleloader. And on top of it, I got a Vortex Razor 3 to 15 powered scope, uh, outdoor ridge, Bipod, this is a seven to 10 inch model. Love this bipod and I actually added the uh, little claw feet on that of it just to grip on random train to get yourself caught up into. Super great adjustability. Um, just, yeah, I love that bipod and I will have a rear support. Rear support um, on here as well, made by Rugged Ridge. Great little device, just for getting me super comfortable, taking a shot, even though it's a muzzleloader, I'm probably gonna be shooting you know, 150. 200 yards max, I will still use rear support just to get super comfortable. It's very easy to set up, very lightweight, fits in your pocket. I always have that on. And then I do have the Quake original um, claw rifle sling too, added on here. And bullets I'm using, they are Barnes 250 grain um, muzzleloader bullets, and I got the Remington Ultimate uh, caps on the back. Shooting Blackhorn 209 powder. Um, I weigh this out to 96 grains by weight, which roughly equals a little over 120 grains by volume. Um, so I'll carry probably six of those with me at a time. And then to help assist with getting the bullet centered in there and punched down, I do have a Thompson Center bullet starter as well. And then because it's muzzleloader, I don't really want to get stuff down my barrel. I'll tape the end of my barrel, but I'll also use the Go Hunt uh, gun slicker. I'll throw it over just to kind of protect my scope, protect the end of my barrel from getting junk in it. And yeah, I just don't want like, my gun getting scratched up or if I was hunting in rain, I don't want to get rain in the action. So, carry that as well. And this all comes out to uh, my gun is a little on the heavy side, being the Remington Ultimate, it's a big burly stock. It comes up to 11.24 pounds on that guy. All right, so now I'm gonna run through my main gear essentials. And these are just all the random little pieces of gear I carry throughout the hunt. One of my favorite pieces is just this Z-Rest that I just cut smaller for a glassing pad. Super lightweight, thinks it weighs like two ounces. Just great to have comfort all day. Get all the elements if you're sitting on you know wet ground. Um, I'm, we'll be carrying a six liter Drone Dairy MSR bag just for water. So I'm not sure where I'm gonna be getting a lot of my water, so I'm gonna pack this up there with me. Also with this gear section, I carry uh, four Go Hunt Edition Caribou Game Bags. And then all the miscellaneous gear gets thrown into the Stone Glacier camp pocket. And I have all my other gear essentials buried inside here. Um, carry this, charge my um, InReach Mini, charge my cell phone for digiscoping, Dark Energy Poseidon. And then I'm also for water purification. I'm the type of guy who goes very minimalist on this. I just take Aquamira drops and actually put them into smaller mini drop holders because you don't need a full bottle. A full bottle lasts you, you know, three, four seasons. So got part A, part B, and the cap to mix everything. And here would be my wind indicator, which I added to this gear part, but it's going to go in my marsupial bino harness. And then recently, as of last week, I switched to the InReach Mini. I had the old DeLorme version that finally uh, had too much abuse and died on me. So now I'm using the InReach Mini to communicate back home with the wife. For a knife, I use a Kestrel Mountain Caper, super ultra lightweight knife, very simplest, simple design. I have a small, I don't know what you call that, really ultra light um, micro USB cable. 
for charging up my inReach on the Poseidon. Nice carry little bag, has a bunch of little essentials in it, like extra, um, extra range finder battery. I do carry a bunch of rubber bands. I use rubber bands a lot for after I kill a deer. I'll use this to put around the mouth to kind of hold everything in before I take a bunch of harvest photos. Just kind of clean the deer up a little bit, makes for better photos. I'll put my license in here. This little uh, uh, Z Pack, um, Z Pack dry bag. And then chapstick. I just have a little lip zip, lip zips chapstick. Works great. You can just tether on your bino harness if you want to. And then these, um, I've recently switched to this year for replacing electrolytes and preventing muscle fatigue when I'm hunting. These are just uh, salt stick, uh, salt capsules. Great little things, pop one or two every 60 minutes while you're hiking. Keep your electrolytes up, keep your muscle cramping down. And that's gonna be it for all my gear. And so the total gear, all that miscellaneous stuff comes right at two pounds. Just all those little small things that I carry. All right, now let's jump over to my cook kit. This trip, I'm gonna be running the MSR Windburner stove. And we're on the Sea to Summit titanium spork. And inside here, I'm just gonna be taking one of these smaller sized uh, gigapower fuel canisters. I can easily get by on, I believe it was like 10 full days, just morning and evening of this, but I'm only going for six. I'm only taking one small one. Then I will also have uh, a blender bottle. In the blender bottle, I'll obviously have the little uh, shaker at the bottom. This is for my breakfast concoction, which we'll get to in a little bit. Um, so yeah, basically runs out my cook kit. It's a pretty simple setup, and this one weighs at 1.74 pounds. So now on to the food I'm packing for this uh, mule deer hunt. It's kind of gonna be a little hybrid design from my stoveless method. I'm still gonna take basically everything I normally would take in the stoveless minus the uh, um, green belly meal at night. So for breakfast, I start off with this big breakfast shake concoction, mix that in a blender bottle. Then I will follow that up around you know mid-morning lunchtime. I have uh, three F-bombs a day, uh, macadamia sea salt, salted chocolate macadamia, and I will have a honey stinger with that. And then afternoon-ish, I'll throw in a pro bar. Normally I have a chocolate chip or this banana nut bread. These things are awesome. And then for dinner, I will just be taking uh, Mountain Houses this trip. Keep it simple with the stove and some of my favorite, pasta primavera, beef stroganoff, uh, biscuits and gravy, it's bomb.com. So roughly the weight of the entire food system is basically a pound and a half of food per day that I'll be consuming. And then for the hydration section, I keep it pretty simple in this category. All I'm going to be running is a Platypus Big Zip 2 liter. And then I have the hose with the on-off valve at the end. I feel like this is really key. A lot of times, catch yourself setting your pack down, actually set your pack on top of your hose and it'll slowly push out all your water. So yeah, with my sleeve here, I have the neoprene sleeve on top of the hose. The benefits of that, it keeps it cool, um, keeps the heat from, you know, blasting on your water. Stick that first sip of water and your water is just nasty hot. It's a great ladder feature of it. Um, also kind of prevents it from freezing sometimes too, if it gets really cold, but I'm not expecting that in this hunt. And then I just have a camo sleeve on the outside. I've had that forever just for archery hunts, just to keep everything, you know, hidden. And that'll run out the hydration section, just two liters of water. On top of that, I believe that comes up to 78 ounces total with water. All right, now I'm gonna jump into what I call the safety gear. So this is my Petzl Reactic headlamp. Love this headlamp. Um, I've gone before trying to do a hunt with just my Petzl um, E-Light. Not bright enough, not quite safe enough, not smart to do. So I'll just carry this one as a backup. This just runs on two uh, like watch batteries. I think I love this one, so bright, and it also has adjustment settings where it like gets lighter or dimmer based on what's in front of you. And the great thing about this headlamp is I don't have to carry any AAA batteries, which I totally love. I have, you know, my whole setup has no batteries on it. I, this is the first time I've ever ran without a GPS. So I'm using my phone for all my GPS stuff. Um, I can charge my phone off my Poseidon. I can charge my headlamp off my Poseidon. Um, same thing with the uh, InReach Mini. So I got those two things for my safety kit. Also, I carry a very minimalist, uh, first aid kit, basically just some uh, moleskin, band-aids, um, waterproof matches, some gauze tape, and inside here I do have some Advil type things, um, mini Bic lighter, 
And then what everyone seems to always be excited about is my small toothbrush. This was kind of the topic of discussion when I was in Wyoming. Toothbrush and my tiny, tiny toothpaste, which I do need to get replaced very soon. Small toothbrush. The next is muzzler hunt, and I want to protect my hearing for later on in life. You know, you, you always say like, oh, you're only gonna take one shot to kill an animal, but you do that 50 sometimes in your lifetime and your ears are gonna hurt. So I will carry um, these little ear protectors. And then also, probably one of the most important things is uh, toilet paper. And yes, I do actually weigh out my toilet paper. Just, I know kind of what I can get by with a full week of toilet paper. So I bet I'll weigh it out and know exactly what to carry for that for every, every hunt I do. So that's my safety gear. So all this gear, I'll shove it into Stone Glacier Evo 3300, the, what I call the full pack weight. So that is everything minus uh, water and weapon, and that comes up to 29.71 pounds. And then um, with water, but without my weapon, it comes up to 34.69 pounds. And then everything all together, gun, water, food, you know, camping, the whole works, uh, 45 pounds for entire six day uh, Utah muzzleloader hunt. So still not super, super lightweight, but still very lightweight for, you know, good duration of the hunt. So I'm gonna go in three days in, coming back out, and then going three days back out. So that's my gear for uh, Utah muzzleloader.